Luke chapter 22. We'll be looking at some occurrences this evening that uh, have been preached on occasion by preachers. Here in Luke chapter 22, picking it up where we left off this morning in verse 29, verse, I mean 49, excuse me, verse 49, Luke 22 and verse 49. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? They're wanting to defend Jesus. They're going to stick up for their Lord. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Anybody know who that one was that did that? Huh? Who? Peter. Right? That's Peter right there. There's Peter. Hey, Lord, let's take them out. We're going to fight with you to the death. That's them. They're going to fight for Jesus. They're going to stand for their Lord. And so they got that. And here comes Peter, man. Whack! Cuts that ear off that servant. I believe, personally, he was going for the Antichrist. He's going for Judas. And uh, didn't quite get it. Verse 50. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest, cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. Suffer ye thus far. What does he mean? That's enough. That's enough, guys. Hold on. That's enough. And he touched his ear and healed him. That's a weird thing. I guess he would he pick it up off the ground. Put it back on his head. So, how'd you like that you're out to get a guy and a guy and, and one of his buddies cuts off your ear and then the guy takes the ear and puts it back on your head and heals it? Would that affect you? I think that would affect me. I don't know. This, we just read through these things. You've got you know, you to get the big picture. What's going on here? Verse 52. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple. See, they're all there. And the elders. Which were come to him. But ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. Hey, they could have come and asked Jesus to come with them at any time. They could hear every time he was preaching somewhere. They knew he was there, but they wanted to do it at secret at night. Why? They didn't want all the people around seeing what was going on. That's that's that working in the darkness stuff. See? Uh, if you're doing right, you shouldn't have to worry about doing it in the darkness. Verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth your hands against me. But this is your hour. And the power of darkness. Then took they him. Led him. Brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Now we looked at a betrayer. This morning. And here we're going to look at a, a denier. Verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now, if you're a Baptist here tonight, as a Baptist, we know that this is a story, a picture of a backslidden Christian. If you're just about anything else, it's the story of someone who lost it and gets it back. <laughs> That's the way those things go. But really what you have here is a great picture of the backslider. A great picture of a backslidden Christian. And some have suggested in this that the reason that Peter has denied the Lord and is denying the Lord is he was afraid of 
what everybody would think of him. Or he was embarrassed to talk about Jesus. Man, that had nothing to do with it at all. What's going on here is Peter is there to defend his Lord. Peter is going to stand for Christ. And then the Lord himself says to Peter, put your sword up. And goes with him. And he's going to let them have their way with him. And Peter's mad at that. He, he doesn't like that. He doesn't appreciate the Lord doing that one bit. And Peter knew if he had his way, it would have been different. And uh, so you get, you get, you get in a, something in your crawl or you get mad at the Lord. You'd be surprised what you might do. I mean, this, this Peter, he wasn't afraid. Peter, you're serious? This is the same uh, Peter that was just cutting off the ear of the servant of the high priest. Really? That Peter? You mean the one that got out of the ship in the storm and walked on the water? He was the one that was afraid? The one that was never afraid to open his mouth at any time? Uh, I don't think he was afraid. Peter was always the one willing to speak up. Peter was always the one willing to testify and stand for the Lord. He just mad at the Lord. The Lord's not doing Peter's will. And Peter doesn't like that a bit. You'd be surprised how many Christians right here in Baldwin County, probably right here in Seminole, all over Pensacola and Milton and Pace and all up over in Fairhope and out in Robertsdale and Foley and down Orange Beach and Gulf Shores and over in the Bon Secure and over in Mobile and up Baymanet and all over this southern area. You'd be surprised how many hundreds, let's say thousands, of born-again Christians there are that tonight aren't sitting in church anywhere, that have no interest of going to church, that have no interest in winning souls, that have no interest in doing anything to put a smile on the face of their God. So what happened? They're backslid. They're backslid. They got out of God's will. And some of them are backslid in churches. Amen, amen. But backslidden in church, backslidden out of the church, backslidden is backslidden. And uh, they're just as saved as you and I. But they're backslidden. They're out of fellowship. Notice how this thing starts. Look there in verse 54. Verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed. Afar off. He's following. See that? Did you see that? Is he following the Lord? He's following the Lord. You know how he's following the Lord? Afar off. That not used to be Peter. Right? I mean, Peter used to be right there with the Lord. You know what I mean? Peter, Peter and the Lord, but he, nobody was any closer to the Lord than Peter. Amen. When, when the Lord wants to take three to go pray with him, Peter's one of them. When the Lord wants to go up into the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter's one of them. When the Lord says, well, who do men say that I am? It was Peter that got up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. But my father, it re God revealed something to Peter. He hadn't revealed to anybody else. Say why? He was that close. He was that close to the Lord. He had fellowship with the Lord. He loved the Lord. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. But what happened? Well, he just started following afar off, afar off. Uh, many today used to be real close. Some of you, you used to be real close to the Lord. I'm not saying you're not following them, but you're not following the way you used to. You drifted off. And there's a big, long space there now between you and Jesus. And a lot of area for a lot of other things to get between you and the Lord. Huh? Remember when you used to sing and enjoy it? You used to memorize the hymns, remember? You used to just look at those words and they just speak to your heart. You'd have tears coming down your face when you'd sing and sing those old songs of Zion. But now, you listen in the car, maybe you'd just rather put on the country station or something else. It doesn't interest you anymore. You've kind of gotten far off. From all that. Remember when you used to witness to everything that moved? When you used to like to tell others about the Lord? And what He's done for you? There was a time when you did that. What's happened? Gotten far off. 
Lord's far from you. You're far from the Lord. And that's what I, he's still following. Peter's still following. Not the way he used to. Gotten far off. Um, used to read your Bible. Used to enjoy reading your Bible, remember? Used to look forward. When you got up, first thing, praying and talking to the Lord. Reading, remember? Remember? When you weren't falling afar off? Remember when you and the Lord were close? That's Peter. He's still following the Lord, but he's following afar off. Remember when you used to love God's people and just every time the church doors were open, you were there. and You were probably the first one there and the last one to leave. Remember? Remember? When you were close, you and the Lord. So what happened? Just get some space. Just get some distance in there. Still following, but following afar off. Remember when you used to rejoice when you heard somebody got saved. And you'd be like, man, I want to win somebody too. Remember? When it excited you to hear about souls being won to Christ. But how about now? You heard somebody was going to get baptized. It was a blessing. You heard about having the Lord's Supper. You couldn't wait. It's testimony time. Man, you got to have, you had to have something to say. You just had to say something about the Lord and how good He's been. Remember? Remember when you were following close? And then what happens? You get a little distance in there, a little space. You get a little separation. That's what's happened with Peter. He's still following, but he ain't following the way he used to. He's following afar off. You say, what is that? That's the first steps to backsliding, see? That's how that thing works. That's how it works. You say, what happened? Well, what happened to Peter? The Lord did something, allowed something he didn't like. And next thing you know, he's frustrated and he's angry and he's bitter. Well, I tell you, there's probably a hundred stories out there, Christians, that are bitter. And they're bitty, bitter about what another Christian did to them or what's, what happened at the church they were at. And all you can hear is here a thousand stories of reasons why people get backslidden on the Lord because of something that happened at a church. They didn't like what happened. That's the truth. And that's no excuse not to live for Jesus Christ because Jesus didn't do that to you. You can't use that as an excuse. It ain't going to work as an excuse when you stand before Jesus Christ. When I stand before Jesus Christ, if I messed up, the Lord's going to know I messed up because I wanted to mess up. I'm not going to stand to the Lord and say, well, he made me mad and he hurt my feelings and, and he took away my wagon and he didn't let me have the ball. What is all that garbage? Huh? Huh? Listen, if anybody wants to find an excuse not to live for the Lord, just look around and find everything wrong with everybody and everybody will have an excuse not to live for the Lord. And let's just shut the doors. Good night, all that stuff. You know what it is? It's bitterness. You know what happens? Just sin. Sin gets in and you don't deal with it. You don't confess it and you you don't try to get victory over it. You're not fighting it and you just let it go and you let it go. And that thing like a sword, and it just sits there and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. Or that anger gets worse. That bitterness gets and that thing just sits in there and it festers and it festers and it festers. And eventually you don't have no strength to do anything. You're sick and you're out. You ain't following nobody nowhere, especially the Lord. And it's sad. It's sad. And uh, you're not going to be able to blame it on another Christian what another Christian did to you. It ain't going to work. That's no reason not to live for Jesus Christ. Lord, let something happen and you didn't like it. Well, farther along, we'll know all about it. That's all I can tell you. All I know is if you're saved, Lord loves you and he's got your best intentions at heart. I know that. I don't have to doubt that a bit. Amen. And uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the problem is you're looking through glasses, temporal glasses and looking like this and you don't see everything the Lord sees. And if you did, you probably see if Peter actually known the whole story and what was going on here. Peter would have been looking forward to the Lord going. He would have been fighting to try to stop. But see, Peter thought he knew the whole situation. He didn't. Okay. Well, if you knew what I knew about someone, well, you don't know everything. So be quiet. And if we knew everything about you, we'd puke. Amen. Amen. I say that in love. You know what happened to Peter? He got his eyes off the Lord. He got him on his problem. You think he would have learned after the whole thing, walking on the water and all that, you know? See you, Galilee. You think he would have learned. That's what happened last time, remember? 
He got his eyes off the Lord and on his problem. There he goes, sinking. Here he is again. <laughs> I'm going to go sit in my corner. <laughs> Boo hoo. And Brother Ray, that's just not very. You're not being very compassionate. No, I'm being compassionate. I'm just telling you, there's no excuse for me getting backslidden. There's no excuse for you getting backslidden. And if you're going to blame anybody, get a mirror and look at it. That's all. Don't blame on somebody else. It's your fault. Amen. Nobody else's. Peter wasn't going to blame this thing on anything else. It was him. He's the one that messed up. And uh, look what happens next. This is look, look, verse 54. Then took they him, led him and brought him to the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. OK, and then what happens? Verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Who's the day? Who's kindling the fire? That ain't the apostles. That ain't Jesus. So who is it? That's the world. You know what they're doing? They're kindling the fire. And here comes Peter. And he's just going, where's the Lord gone? I don't know where the Lord's gone now. Peter, he, he don't have his eyes on the Lord anymore. You know what Peter knows? All, all Peter knows right now is he's cold. He's gotten cold. And so now what he's going to do is he's going to sit down there with the world. Try to get some comfort. From the world. And that's what happens when you start getting backslidden. You're going to have to find comfort somewhere. Instead of finding it from the Lord, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get it from the world. And you're going to sit right down at that world's fire and warm your... You'll never get really hot like you were, but you don't want to be cold. You know it's not good. So you know what? You'll end up being lukewarm. That's latency in church. Lord said, I would you were hot or cold. One or the other. Halfway. Say, so, well, I just comfort himself with the fire of this world. And that's why they'll just sit down and they'll... They'll turn that fire controller on. They'll fire up the TV and they'll fire up the satellite. And they'll just sit there and get comforted. Because they sure aren't going to find it from a Bible. And they sure don't plan on spending any time on their knees getting things right. And so they'll seek comfort from other things. They'll get it from drugs or they'll go get drunk. <laughs> Why do you think Israel was longing to go back to the leeks and onions of Egypt? So what is that? That's comfort food. Right? Anybody know what comfort food is? When you're having a bad day, when things aren't going right, how are you going to comfort yourself? Oh, yeah, you're going to get a piece of that chocolate pie or something. And you, uh -huh. Yeah. You know what you're doing? You're going to comfort yourself. Because that's how we are. And when things aren't going our way and when things aren't going right, we're going to find comfort one way or another. And so you sit down at the world's fire and get comfort from this world. Look with me in Proverbs. Hold your place there in loop. But look with me real quick in Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Uh, we, listen, we got, we got Thanksgiving coming up. We got Christmas coming up. Could I give you some words of advice, Christian, if you've got a bunch of lost family members and you're going to be spending some time with lost family members, don't spend too much time. I know you want to help them. I know you want to win them. I know you want to witness to them. That's good. Don't spend too much time. Because what you'll find after a while usually is you're not going to be convincing them as much as they're going to be convincing you. Next thing you know, you're going to be sitting right down there at their fire. Next thing you know, you're going to be right back there in the world. You're going to forget about all the bad times you had there. You're just going to think about the good time. You start getting warm around that fire. You better be careful. You better be careful. Look there in Proverbs chapter 14 with me, please. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 14. Notice what the Bible says. Verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. You know, say, what does that mean? Uh, you know where your backsliding is going to start? It's going to start in your heart. And before you maybe ever get away from the Lord physically, you're going to get away from them in your heart first. You're going to turn your back on. You're going to get a distance. You're going to start getting cold. And some of you, you know what's been happening in your own life. I'm here to tell you, listen, the Lord's got you here tonight for a reason. See? He's got you here for a reason. You need to fix that thing. Fix it now before it gets too bad. 
It's only going to get worse until you and the Lord get things right. It's only going to get worse. Look over in chapter 23. We're in Proverbs. Look at Proverbs chapter 23. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. That's what it said, right? Is that what it said? Look there in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. <laughs> say, what is that? You hear somebody say, you are what you eat? No, you are what you think. And you start thinking in your heart and in your mind about backsliding. Guess what's going to happen next? When Israel started thinking about Egypt, what do you think the result was going to be? See? And uh, see, that's the danger around hanging around the world and hanging around the wrong crowd and watching too much of the junk that's out there on television and all the rest of it. Do you understand what's happening? Is all that stuff is there with a siren call of the world just trying to woo you back and woo you back. Brother, remember how good it was and how much fun you had? You don't have to put up all these Christians and all these hypocrites and all this stuff. Why, well, you can just go and be your own person and just have a good time. Yeah, let me know how the trip works out there, prodigal. When you're down there in the hog pen. Because if you're the Lord's, he'll make sure that's where you end up. You can count on that. He'll make sure of it. Now look back with me there in Luke in chapter 22. Notice in verse 56. He starts just far off. He starts getting cold. He starts getting cold. Verse 56. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. About the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also is with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he spake, the cock crew. The Lord said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Not me, Lord. What, Peter? Denied him. Flat out. Oh, you're, you're, you're one of those followers of Jesus, aren't you? No, not me. Didn't I see you at the church? Uh uh, no, uh, not me. What happened? Well, he's gone from on fire telling everybody about Jesus to here he doesn't even want to mention his name. He's not going to bow his head and thank his God for his food before he eats it when he sits in that restaurant. Huh? Why do that? Somebody might look at him and think he's a Christian. He doesn't want people thinking that. Not what he's been doing, not what he's been saying, not how he's been living. He's embarrassed when somebody maybe hears that he's associated with anybody that has anything to do with the church. <gasps> Why? He's denied the Lord. Denied the Lord. Are you a Christian? No. <laughs> I mean, would a Christian do what I'm doing? That's Peter. Cussing. You can tell I'm not a Christian. Listen, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we can tell you're probably not a Christian, but he was. Somebody says, I don't believe a Christian could do that. A Christian can do anything. Anything that a lost person can do. Anything. And there's Peter. Right down there with the world. I uh, heard testimony of Rex Harrison. He got saved as a young man, but he got out of fellowship and got backslid. Rex Harrison playing the piano in a nightclub. Drinking himself drunk every night. Playing the piano. And some... Old, five-time married harlot with few fake hairs and fake teeth, makeup all over, caked all over her face. She comes up to Rex as he's playing. And she just looks at him and <laughs> she says, you must be a Christian. He said, what? What? She says, you must be a Christian. I can tell. By the way you play the blues. Could you imagine? <laughs> Here you are, backslid as could be, trying to run from the Lord, trying to get somewhere. Where not, and some lady out of nowhere just comes in and says, you must be a Christian. You can get backslid as you want, but you ain't going to get away from God. He's going to send somebody by your way. You can count on that. Now, what a testimony, man. What a thing. But I was in my office at the... Uh, veteran affairs, not like, a couple weeks ago now. And there was a couple older ladies in there. I was assisting with a widow's pension thing. And 
We're just talking and saying, there's nothing, no conversation about God, Lord, or anything like that. Just trying to help her with the thing. And the one lady said, so how long have you been pastoring? I said, I'm sorry, what? She said, how long have you been pastoring? I said, I didn't tell you I was a pastor. She says, I know, but I could just tell. I mean, you have your Bible sitting there and just your mannerism. And I'm like, good night, man. I'm glad I wasn't doing anything wrong. Huh? How'd you like that? Be backslidden and out of fellowship and somebody come up to you and hand you a track. Can I tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me? Ooh, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? And you think about the days you used to do it. Now you're mad and cold. Backslid. Listen, when you get rid of the scripture signs and the bumper stickers and the friends and the church and the T-shirts and you chuck all that, you're done. Okay. You've denied the Lord. You don't want anybody to know that you're associated with Jesus Christ. It don't get no more backslid than that. And that's sad. That's that same Peter. Though all forsake you, not I. Really, Peter? See, it can happen to anybody. Believe me, it happened to Peter. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. Better stay close. Don't get far off. You feel yourself getting cold? You better get to the Lord and get hot. Don't go to the world's fire. Though all others forsake thee, not I. You know how many pastors there are around here right now? I mean pastors, preachers. Pastors, preachers, evangelists right now that are selling insurance and hanging out at car lots trying to sell a few cars to make a living. Just cold on God. And all they got is God's gift that he gave them to try to talk to people. So now they have to use that to make a living because they have no desire at all to do anything for the Lord anymore. Because so-and-so did them wrong at the church and this person did them wrong at the church and what their family had to go through to try to be a pastor and live for the Lord and they just quit. But all they're doing is just making it worse. They ain't gonna fix, you ain't going to fix nothing quitting on the Lord. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to fix anything. It's going to get worse. Backslider and heart shall be filled with his ways. I've run into them. I've run into them by the scores, by the hundreds, probably by the thousands the time I've been saved. I know ones I went to Bible Institute with, Bible school with. They're not in church anymore. They're not living for the Lord anymore. They're cold. They're done. They've thrown in the towel. Maybe somebody here, I don't know. You might not be doing anything major bad wrong. I'm not saying that. But you're right where the devil wants you. Because you might not be any, doing anything bad wrong, but you sure ain't doing anything good right. And only one life will soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. Did you hear that? What are you doing for Christ? Well, I'm not doing anything bad. What are you doing for Christ? Don't waste your life. Out there lukewarm with the world. You'll just waste your life. The only thing that's going to matter one day is what you did for Jesus Christ. And it won't matter if you messed up here and there and, and sinned here and there and got the thing. That ain't going to, that's no big deal. Listen, the Lord can take care of all that. Because at least you were doing something. But don't stand up there with nobody won to Christ and no answer prayers and no accomplishment for the Lord. For all of eternity, don't do it! Don't do it. It's not worth it. But Brother Ray, if you know, I, listen, I've heard stories probably worse than yours. It's not a reason to not live for Jesus Christ. He hasn't done you wrong. Has he? Don't blame him. Look at this when we get done. Uh, it does have kind of a good ending, praise the Lord. But in verse 61, in the Lord term, right after Peter denies, third time. The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Did you notice that? This wasn't a gradual thing. 
You know, when you're backslidden, it's, it, you need to start working on getting right understanding. But there's going to have to be a spark. There's going to have to be an impetus. There's going to have to be a what they call a come to Jesus moment. Just as there is when you get saved, it's the same thing when you're going to get right with God. There has to be a face off. There has to be a meeting. You and Jesus. The only way to get back out of backslidden and get back with Jesus Christ is to get with Jesus Christ. And that's serious business. See, that's serious business. And you've you got to picture this thing now. Realize Peter's gone in there. He's following the Lord far off and John goes in. And then here they take Jesus and they take him in and they're questioning him. After the done question, the soldiers take him. Put a bag over his head. Punch him and kick him. Come on, prophesy, man. Who hit you, huh? Come on. They take that off and they throw a crown of thorns on his head. Take a reed and start bamming on the top of the head. And hitting those thorns down into his skull. Blood pouring out all over his face. And they've got him bound now. Taking him over to Agrippa. And as Peter's walking down through that courtyard, as, as, as Jesus is walking down through that courtyard and they got him bound, here's Peter over there warming his hands at the fire. Just when Jesus is coming out, Peter denies for the third time. And that rooster lets off a coo coo doo doo And Peter hears that thing, realizes what happened, and looks over, and Jesus looks at him. Can you imagine that? What a thing to see. Now, I don't, I don't think the Lord, listen, I don't think the Lord looked at him with anger. I don't think that. I just think he looked at him with disappointment. With kind of a told you so. Look. And Peter sees that. Realizes, my God, what have I done? He goes out. Weeps. Barely. This really happened, you know. It really happened. Notice what happened when the Lord looked at him. What did it say? And Peter remembered. You know what he remembered? Interesting. Of all things to think about and remember at that time. You know what he remembered? What did the Bible say he remembered? The word of the Lord. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So I look around here and I, I see someone like Leanne. Praise God, man. How old are you now, sister? 24. So you were 13 when I started pastoring here. Putting that word in her. Putting that word. And here she is. Praise God. Hadn't been in church for a while, but I had a good chance to put a lot of word in him. A few weeks back there, when Wes found out he had orders, guess where he came? To ask for prayer. So what happened? He remembered the word of the Lord. Sunday school teachers, you know why we're doing what we're doing? You know why you put that word in there and you put that book? So hopefully sometime in the future, it's going to click. Now, when it does, something's going to have to happen. It's going to have to be that come to Jesus moment. It's going to have to get on. It's going to have to get real. All we can do is put the book in him. That's what we can. Robert Robinson. Anybody ever heard of Robert Robinson? Raise your hand if you know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about? Robert Robinson. He authored a hymn in your Bible. But he lost his happy communion with the Savior that he had once enjoyed. And in his declining years, he wandered into the byways of sin. As a result, he became deeply troubled in spirit, hoping to relieve his mind 
he decided to travel. In the course of his journeys, he became acquainted with a young woman on spiritual matters. And so she asked him what he thought of a hymn that she had just been reading. And to his astonishment, he found it to be none other than his own composition. He runs into this woman as he's backslidden and in sin. And she starts asking him about some hymns. And the hymn she starts reading to him is the hymn that he wrote. How about that? He tried to evade her question, but she continued to press him for a response. Suddenly, he began to weep. With tears streaming down his cheeks, he said, I'm the man who wrote that hymn many years ago. I'd give anything to experience again the joy I knew then. Although greatly surprised, she reassured him that the streams of mercy mentioned in his song still flowed. Mr. Robinson was deeply touched and turning his wandering heart to the Lord, he was restored to full fellowship. I think we should sing that song. So, sister, if you come up and play for us and let's open our Bibles to that song that Robert Robinson wrote so many years ago, uh, hymn 507 in your hymnal. And maybe you're here this evening and you've been following. You're following the Lord, but you're following kind of afar off. Some space has gotten in between you and the Lord. You know, not be a good time. Not be a good time. Come to an old-fashioned altar and get those things fixed up between you and the Lord. Don't let it get any worse than it has to. Getting, getting a little cold, maybe. Been getting cold on the Lord. Instead of going to the world for your comfort, why don't you come to an altar? Why don't you get comfort from where you're supposed to get it? Why don't you and Jesus get things fixed up tonight? How about it? The altar's open. You know the Lord's been speaking to your heart. You going to stay cold? You going to stay hard? Or are you going to come and get things fixed? All you got to do is come down here and have a come to Jesus moment. I'll tell you what, there may be some here right now. Listen, you're okay. Everything's good between you and the Lord, but you got a family member. You know someone right now. They're not where they need to be with the Lord. Maybe you'd just come and lift them up in prayer. Bring them up before Jesus. Ask the Lord to do work in their heart. Amen? Somebody needs to pray for them. Man, I ever get real backslidden. You know what I want? I don't want anybody beating me down. I want it. You know what I want? I want somebody to pray for me. Maybe somebody, you, you could pray for somebody you know right now. We use this opportunity. We'll go ahead, go ahead and sing this song. And think about it. The guy, after he wrote this song, 